Sick Harrison Price, a special post-game edition. Round two, game five, Vancouver Canucks three, Edmonton Oilers two. The Canucks take a 3-2 series lead in this best of seven Western Conference playoff series. Matt Sick Harris alongside Blake Price, Grady Sass hitting switches, conducting things. And this show, as always, a presentation of Applewood Auto Group. Applewood Nissan in the Richmond Auto Mall has the legendary 2024 Nissan Pathfinder with lease rates from 2.99% for 24 months. You can finance it at 2.99% as well, also up to 24 months. Check it out right now at the Richmond Auto Mall. It's all good at Applewood. Blake, the Vancouver Canucks play their best game of the series, maybe their best game of the postseason. So. And yeah. a ninth straight one-goal game for Vancouver. So if you have any nails left, congratulations. But they're one win away now from heading to the Western Conference Final and upsetting the Edmonton Oilers on the back of some extraordinary defensive play tonight. Uh, the penalty kill is exceptional, holds the Oilers off the board in five attempts. The defensive game around that is terrific. The shot attempts favor Vancouver 70 to 59. So they win that battle for the first time since game one of this series. And they hold Connor McDavid without a point for the second time in this series. He goes without a point and a minus two on the evening. And oh, yeah, all the lineup changes and line changes. Rick Tockett continues to have the Midas touch. No passengers here this evening. No, that was a full team effort to the point that Phil D. Giuseppe did a body switch with Connor McDavid. Um, that that's the lengths to which the Vancouver Canucks were the were the better team. Um, I wanted to see it, Matt. I, I because you know, to some degree, uh, even if they miraculously kept winning the way that they had won so far in this series, um, hey, fans will take it. Like you you're into the conference final, great. But would you really have dreams of the Stanley Cup at that point if you are fighting tooth and nail? I mean, you're still, you're still as you mentioned, oh. clinging to the edge because they're one-goal games. But you want to believe that you can be the better team on a given night. And that was mm -hmm. my challenge to them before the game was, can you be the better hockey team, please? Can you show that you belong here at this stage in the playoffs? And they did. Emphatically, yep. they were the better team. Well, uh, winning one goal games, of course, very important in, in the Stanley Cup playoffs, but you're quite right. In, in terms of form, it was hard to to see this team, if not advancing through this round, because I still think, uh, you know, they were in a very good spot, as we talked about on the Daily Show heading into today. But, you know, needless to say, whether there's Dallas or Colorado in the next round, that would be uh, an extraordinary test, and the Canucks would have to up their game even further. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's get back to the... Mm -hmm. events that were in this 3-2 game 5 victory um look it's once again another night Blake where they don't start great they're taking some penalties early in this hockey game it took them 6 minutes to get a shot on goal they have but 3 shots in the first 10 minutes of the game and so you're sitting there saying to yourself don't let this pickered goaltender off the hook for a second straight night but the shots started coming later in the first period and then in the second period where the Canucks really put their foot down. Uh, they leaned on their big guns here a little bit. We'll get into some ice time, ice times in a second. Carson Soucy redeems himself because it was an awfully tough first period for Carson Soucy and for Ian Cole. In that matter, both guys with three giveaways in the first period. Once again, they give up the first goal, and this has not exactly been a series of, you know, uh, the team that scores first winning, unlike we saw through much of the Vancouver Canucks regular season. And, you know, uh, Edmonton now has to ask themselves some questions. They get a goal from Evander Kane tonight, and that's the second forward who scores outside of, the, yeah. outside of the, and then Jan Mark. So, you know, Edmonton on a night where uh, they finally get support scoring, not from the defense, which they haven't. And yet the Vancouver Canucks are able to hold McDavid and Dreisaitl and Shaq, and there hasn't been a whole lot of that uh, through this series. Well, the reason Both. why would, the reason why they can say that, Matt, is because of the penalty kill, right? I yep. mean, it, you know, the, it's one thing for the, to hold them in check at five on five. They've actually done a pretty decent job of that throughout the series. Yep. But the power play has been an issue, and they were magnificent on the power play. Just three shots allowed, never mind any goals allowed, and they got two shots shorthanded. 
And mm -hmm. that was as close to a shorthanded goal by either team in any game um, in tonight's contest. I mean, they were aggressive, hungry, and they just they just won the battles. And then when you when you get depth scoring yourself, so they matched the depth scoring. It was all depth scoring up until the fifth goal of the game here, and yep. and what a marvelous job by by Phil Di Giuseppe. I already lauded him, but in terms of the goal itself. And then the opening goal as well was some hard work in front and the puck squirts out to, to Susie. So, um, you know, they just, they just match them and then yep. be on them because they ultimately, you, know, you just knew the way the big guns were playing, because unlike the Edmonton big guns, the Canucks big guns were close all night long. You just knew yep. Well, let's focus on Di Giuseppe for uh, a second here. He gets a goal. He has several other chances. He's plus two on the evening in just nine minutes. In 13 seconds, he has three shots on goal, four shot attempts, and he has four hits, which is tied for second on the club alongside your guy, Vasily put Colson Blake. So he back in the lineup had been away from the team. Uh, Blake, I'm not sure if you've caught the interview he's done on TNT with their set, but he gets emotionally choked up talking about his wife, Maggie and the birth mm. of their son, Sam. He says it was a difficult pregnancy and he was very uh proud of the way his wife and son battled for nine months boy i think everybody in phil di giuseppe's orbit will be proud of the way he played tonight that's one of three lineup changes that rick talkett made the others of course coming back with nils hoaglander <laughs> like good thing they won this game because hoaglander would be seeing that post in his nightmare oh my god for years and years uh, Could it have been so, more square? Like I think the post oh, has a dent in it. Like it was just so flush <laughs> against the post. Uh, not to mention the line changes on top of the lineup changes that work. Elias Pedersen looked the best he had looked all playoffs long, and Elias Lindholm continues to be an absolute beast for the Vancouver Canucks. Blake, we had talked about how Edmonton leaning on their big guns, and Rick Tockett needed to shorten the bench here. A little bit. JT Miller plays over 22 minutes tonight. Elias Lindholm plays over 22 minutes tonight. Quinn Hughes plays 25 minutes tonight. They lean on Zadorov and Myers for 20 minute evenings, and he shortens the bench a little bit. There wasn't a lot of Ian Cole uh, as this game went along. He had a tough night, but you know, even the other guys around, like Nils Oman, uh, was was one of the contributors tonight. Philip Ronick finishes a minus one in this game, but I thought Ronick was as He's better. good as he has looked in in some time. Uh, Connor Garland, he finishes a minus two, but he was right there in the middle of the action again, and that line maybe wasn't as effective as it was with Lindholm, but Teddy Bluger stepped in and they had their moments. And the BP defensemen well. were great too. I thought Susie uh, ironed himself out. I thought he was very good defensively over the final 40 minutes. And I thought that Myers and, uh, and Zadorov were, were very good as well. Myers a plus three on the night. Um, and Zadorov great when he needs to be uh, timely hits on Kane. And, and I, you know, I was worried about Zadorov ramping up the BS too much. He's kept the BS level at mwah, just the perfect je ne sais quoi. You know, like he, he's, mm -hmm. uh, you need somebody like this. You need somebody to stir it up and to be a bit of a, an emotional lightning rod. And, and, and Zadorov's been that. And then he's been good defensively. But but the three big guys, uh, invaluable for the Vancouver Canucks. Um, it was just a great team effort. The, yeah. the, only, the only lineup, the only player in the lineup that I've got serious questions about still is Ian Cole. Yeah, yeah, it, it it has been a very difficult series for Ian Cole. He's not the fleetest foot defenseman, so the speed alone has challenged him in this series. And boy, come the second period, Blake, like this game is moving up and down a little bit. Fantastic hockey to watch, but I'm not necessarily sure that's the style that the Vancouver Canucks want to engage in for long stretches of time against this Oilers play team. And then, you know, he's playing his own zone as well, Cole. Yeah. has left a lot to be desired. So there, I think there was a case for Noah Juleson to play this game based on struggles that Cole had had in the series. I think there's even a better case for Noah Juleson to play he only game played six 12 Saturday. Cole only played 12 minutes. Like, yeah, I'm I mean, not I sure he played much in the third period, uh, Blake. Um, so Juleson can do 12 minutes. If, if that's right. what you're asking to substitute right. for, I think Juleson can do it. Yeah, uh, there was also a couple of nervous moments with Cole when he has to take the puck on his backhand as a left-hander playing on the right-hand side. So... Uh, look, that's uh, one change that I'm sure the Vancouver Canucks are going to consider for game six. 
Now the question back on Edmonton, Blake. Does Stuart Skinner make a return on home ice, or are they going with Calvin Pickard, who really I don't think was the problem for the Edmonton Oilers tonight? The DiGiuseppe goal is certainly one that he wants back, and if you want to say that Skinner or a more capable or a more experienced goaltender makes that save, sure enough, but when I look at the Edmonton reasons for defeat tonight, I'm not sure Calvin Pickard hits the podium on that more on that score Matt last I checked Stuart Skinner's save percentage hasn't gone up above the 870 or whatever it's at right now in the series and uh if you do the math on tonight that's still well over 900 for for Calvin Pickard uh I think Knobloch has to go back to Pickard he's given really the Oilers a better chance to win Pickard's giving okay. them a chance to win every night Stuart Skinner uh, really if Stuart Skinner's in this game playing like he did it's 5-2 Canucks mm -hmm. without any doubt in my mind so, uh, I mean, I'm if I'm if I'm Knobloch, I play Pickard, and I, if I'm in the head of Knobloch right now, if I can imagine what he's thinking, he's thinking, why on God's green earth would I would I change? Well, the, the one thing I would say is that hockey coaches tend to like to make changes after losses, particularly so in the playoffs. And if there is any sense of play the guy who got me here, if I'm going down, I'm going down with the goaltender who had a very good season this year for me, not the guy playing his third Stanley cup playoff games, a uh, game, a career backup journeyman who was coming off really the only season of success that he's had in the NHL. So we had these know, similar talks with she loves and he, and, and, you know, coming mm -hmm. off of good, good nights, you know, the, 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 he just blamed the, the, the skaters. And I think Knobloch will right. be the same. Yeah, Knobloch well, I think that's fair, but shots? come on. I think she loves, though, the difference being, and we tackled this on the show earlier in the week, he's a young goaltender in ascension, uh, whereas Alvin Pickard is a old goaltender who played in front of a very good team this year and was able to get some results, but really hadn't shown anything in his career to that point to suggest that he's an NHL goaltender, let alone an NHL playoff goaltender. Uh, the other thing this does, I suspect, is further entrench Archer's she loves in the Vancouver Canucks crease. He's absolutely playing game six, Blake. And, you know, then there's the looming matter of Thatcher Demko, who is getting quite better, according to Rick Tockett. Although there's this drama now today where he was expected, fully expected to participate in the morning skate and then no showed, uh, to which Frank Saravelli says uh, he thinks that there might have been a setback now all of a sudden. Oh so the goodness. roller coaster there continues. I miss that. <laughs> yeah, I think the roller coaster. Yeah, but arms and legs inside the ride, please. Who knows where we are with Thatcher Demko? <laughs> um, you know, so I think you just, I think you just, you put your blinders on. Who cares? You're, everything is mm -hmm. going fine with Shilovs. He continues to be a very good goaltender, and you just ride with the guy that's uh, been five and three now in these playoffs. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I wanted to say this too. If if, the, if you ever needed proof that there is no momentum in the playoffs. Exhibit A this very series. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, th there's been every opportunity for each team to say, Whoa, what a game! Let's do it again the next one. And nobody's been able to do that. Win, loss, win, loss, win, loss for the Vancouver Canucks, um, or for the mm -hmm. Oilers, I guess, in in uh, in the series. So, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see if Rick Tockett can bottle anything here because neither team has been able to bottle what they did the previous game and turn it into a result. And that's going to be very interesting to me to see, mm -hmm. to see how the next game rolls out. Let's go to our engagement post at Sakaris and price on X.com. Now, gentlemen, I'm not sure if you saw that note come across your screen today, but it is know. officially X.com. Twitter. Still um, works. What's that? Does Twitter, Twitter still work? Have you yeah. tried? Have you tried? Yes, I just did right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Michael says Oilers and their one line team are starting to show major fatigue. Uh, you had wondered earlier in the series if playing Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl nearly 30 minutes a night would catch up with them in this series. I was a little skeptical it would catch up in this series, maybe as the Stanley Cup road went down, if they were so fortunate to advance. But what do you think? Do you think there's a fatigue factor setting in? Well, don't, With the don't, older top players playing as much as they have? Don't take my word for it. Our Jay Downton, our uh, grand poobah there at the Nation Network, uh, you know, out of Edmonton, uh, unabashedly an oiler guy, mm -hmm. uh, jokingly tweeted out in the late stages of the second period, is Vancouver at altitude? 
Yeah. Um, you know, well, they look sluggish uh, and, and frankly, yeah. McDavid's not looked on his game two nights in a row here. McDavid so, has a turbo button. He's a video game. Right. We know this. Mm-hmm. And yet there's a couple times he's still fast, but he's catchable. Like not, not catchable. He's, he's uh you can keep pace with them. The, the, the Canucks defensemen were gapping properly and they weren't allowing big David right. to come close to turning the corner. And well, normally and he presses that turbo button and he's around the corner, right? And, and every uh, sort of X's and O's guys that we've talked to here uh, in the series, whether that's uh, Mark Crawford, Frank Corrado, have said have mentioned gap control and just how good a job the Vancouver Canucks are doing, particularly their defensemen and, frankly, the forwards, because it's been a team effort defensively in maintaining good gaps on Connor McDavid and not necessarily giving him all the time and space that if you do give it to him, uh, he's going to carve you. So heck of a job by the Canucks whole uh, as a whole, as a defensive group, as a whole. Uh, Jay says back heel, back post, back the net, back to Edmonton, back to the Western Conference final. Petey's back. Let's talk about the thrilling game-winning goal with 30 seconds left where both Pedersen, both the Elias's, Elias, get on the score sheet with assists, and JT Miller knocks it home. Needless to say, to the delight of the crowd, really hadn't been Miller's best night in these playoffs, Blake. And this was coming off the, you know, uh, self-flagellation for making mistakes on the game-winning goal in game four. The text to talk it saying how sorry he was for how poorly he played, but he scores the big one. And so, you know, he was good, just not necessarily great in the first 59 minutes and winds up scoring what very well could be you know, a legendary Canucks goal as they go on to win this series. First of all, let's credit Rick Tocca because we said, you know, maybe some mid-game adjustments still could be improved upon for Rick Tocca. There's a minute left in the game, whatever it was when they sent the guys out there, your three best players on paper. Maybe mm-hmm. you could add Besser into that in that mix, but, but you know, the guys that have the best mobility, Besser's a little bit, you know, if it does head the other way, you have to hedge your bets. I mm-hmm. like the idea. Pedersen had jumped tonight. Elias Elias and JT Miller all out there in that final minute. And, uh, Hey, I, 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 you know, you're watching and you're just wondering, did that go in? It was in and out so quick. We yeah. saw Hoaglander hit the post and, and all this, uh, the uproar around that and the earlier, uh, puck on the goal line, the da- uh, Darren ape, uh, pulls back. Um, I mean, honestly, there's, there were so many close calls, I needed to account to five before I believed that that yeah. goal was in, and and sure enough, it's in. But um, the stick of the of the big guns to not get two down, and there was a little bit of a dip there for Pedersen, where I thought Pedersen was starting to get frustrated. Of, I'm playing better, and it's still not happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I hope he sleeps tonight, going, okay, that's how you do it. Yeah, and I hope and I hope Hogan, I hope all of them realize, ah, that's how. Remember we said the third period last game front foot you're a good team Stuart Smalley this MF right. across the goal I, you know do it again go go to bed looking in that mirror gosh darn it you're good enough because that's the way they can play and you're not gonna play that 60 minutes but play that 40 minutes some nights and you're gonna win a lot of games yeah I, I said at the beginning of the series I thought it was critical for Vancouver to play on the front foot and that meant getting game one that meant getting game three after it was tied up and that meant getting game five here yeah tonight all the pressure now on the Edmonton Oilers. This is a team with Stanley Cup aspirations. They are not satisfied with round two of the playoffs where you know, I'm sure the Canucks would tell you they're not, but let's face it, in their team cycle, this is already a fantastic season. Anything further than this is gravy. They'll be at home, Blake, and as we know, well, sometimes that home building and that home crowd can spur you on and encourage you. Things go poorly, and if the Canucks can get out on the front foot with the first goal Saturday in Edmonton, suddenly the building becomes tense, and sometimes the players can feed off that as well, right? Understanding where the crowd is, understanding that the doubt is starting to creep in across a broader constituency. Our friends at Bet365 already have Saturday's game up and on the menu. A reminder here, this is a... Five o'clock Pacific start on mm-hmm. Saturday. If uh, Frank Saravelli's reporting is correct here, the Canucks plus 170 and the total set at six goals here. Interestingly, for the game, I lost, uh, I didn't make my bets at 365 
bet today. Blake Lysland home did not score a goal. Refresh me. You were on Ederson tonight. Got the assist, not the goal. So that doesn't work either. No. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll try again for game six. Now, if you do want to play the daily faceoffs playoff parlay, parlay challenge. Yeah. Uh, I got six of eight there. Mm -hmm. That's bad. Did you really? Yeah. So is that good? I think that's good. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with it. Are you? Yep. Okay. Congratulations, me. Uh, Saturday looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> um, this game, right into the Whitecaps game, I have uh, right. a feeling if you're listening on Apple television, my prep might be suffering a little bit. So uh, <laughs> if I'm struggling to name yeah. Sounders, uh, you know why. Yeah. One last thing we should note, uh, the crowds, uh, the crowd encouraging Elias Pettersson, uh, tonight getting in his corner after what yeah. has been a very difficult press, the uh, very difficult postseason. The crowd was so and, good. Yeah, it was. Oh my and, gosh. and a difficult uh, day facing the music yesterday. Here's Tyler Myers on the fan support of Pettersson. I thought it was great. There's so much outside noise. The way he responded tonight for him to feel that, I think it's going to be great for him going forward. Well, we're guaranteed another game at Rogers Arena this season, whether it's Game 7 against the Edmonton Oilers, and that would be uh, Monday night, or whether it's Game 3 of the Western Conference Final against Dallas, or Game 1 of the Western Conference Final against Colorado. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, indeed. A reminder, we are 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time, live on YouTube. Twitter, many social media channels on The Daily Show. We're going to have Frank Saravelli on with an update, Thatcher Demko, whatever he's hearing there. We're going to uh, we're going to have Jeff Patterson on as well to talk about this game. And speaking of J-Pat, Jeff Irfan Gaffar, if you're looking for the full meal deal post game right after the horn, check out at Rinkwide Vancouver and subscribe and subscribe to that channel. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you on Friday. Hey, everybody. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Sakaris and Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.